<laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. And the uh, the book is actually launching right now. <laughs> I I didn't really. Oh, I'm getting all these things. Just bought the book. Wonderful. I really, really am excited. Uh, actually, it launches across the world a little differently. We are already number one in uh, uh, Europe. For in Germany uh, and a few other countries and different parts of the United States, actually, even for compulsive behavior, behavioral, emotional and social disabilities, mental health law and brain diseases. So, um, <clears throat> yeah. Um, so we're uh, yeah. So we're actually launching at 12 noon today. So that's when, you know, all these uh or most of these uh, purchases all goes towards these rankings. So uh, I'm seeing a lot of wonderful news in the chat here. So yeah, I gave you a hot link. Uh, we're launching it for a dollar because anybody who has known me or anybody who's heard me in the last few years knows how passionate I am about this. And I will tell you right now, I don't know where oh, I'd probably be dead right now. Uh, if I had not gotten my brain repaired. And so what we're going to talk about today are all those things that we need to do to repair the brain. And here's an overview of some of the stuff we're going to talk about today and what we talked about last time. Okay. Thank you. I'm getting all these wonderful things in here about people buying the book. That's wonderful. I, I honestly, honestly hope that people will buy it and that they will read it. Uh, we're actually uh, going to be looking at a uh, audio book in January. I've already found a, a studio for that. So that's what I'm going to try to shoot for. But understand what we're talking about here is very different from medications. Very different. So medications will calm the brain. Okay. It's, when you take a medication, it's not like taking an antibiotic where it's actually going to kill the disease and it's going to make you better. Uh, psychiatric medications, thank God that we've got them. Uh, a couple problems there. One is only maybe about 20% of everybody who's on them are on the right ones. Uh, that's a pretty scary, scary statistic. Uh, and that's why we keep adjusting medication. And even if you are on the right medication for a while, your body chemistry changes as you get older or God knows what. And so, you know, we've got a lot of issues with that. But thank God we've got medications, and I actually believe more people should be on the correct medications. But what we're going to talk about today is actually rewiring your brain. Now, we talked in a previous session about how your brain actually does rewire. And as you hear me talking right now, your brain is rewiring. Okay, we're going to look at neuroscience. We are not going to look at uh, the medications. We're going to look at the neuroscience of how your brain rewires, and all these things in here are what you got to do to change the way you live and change the way Americans live, all right? And this, this is what is so catastrophic, and, and it's kind of funny. I've got a lot of different speaking engagements on this coming up, usually talking about uh, harassment, bullying, and your mental health. Now, Let's just do a little poll here because everybody can open their mic and chat, open up and talk anytime you want. You are always welcome. Uh, you can always chat me up. And you guys, I'll tell you, I don't think there's anybody in America who doesn't know how to use chat. <laughs> okay, so you can do that. Now, let's do our little reactions right now. Okay, um, how many people think that it is not normal to have mass shootings in America. How many people think that is just not normal? Now, we're getting it. Yeah, I love the cameras that are open because we can all vote with our hands. Look at that. Yeah, absolutely. Jen, Carrie, wonderful. You guys have got this down. I just love doing this. This is so good for me. Now, think about it. Everybody's talking about gun control. Wonderful. You talk about gun control all you want. Brenda's telling me it's not normal. Phoenix, what a great comment. It's normal now. We are averaging 1.8 mass shootings every day. And let me tell you, I don't hear anybody talking about brain health. We start talking about mental health. Well, we got to get on the mental health. Okay, yeah, that's wonderful. And then we always talk medications. Uh, again, I am not anti-medication by any stretch. 
I am glad those medications are there. You should thank God for them every day. But why would you not try to improve your brain function? Why would you not try to repair your brain? Okay. It's like heart disease. There's no repairing that. Once you've got arterial sclerosis and these types of things throughout your body, you're on borrowed time. There's no way to fix it. Your brain and your liver, you can fix them. So that's just a long intro here. So, uh, you know, get the jackasses out of your life. Number one, number one. Now you can't get them all out of your life. And I will tell you point blank. I just got back from Denver doing a program on harassment and bullying. Now, I hope you've all done your harassment and bullying training. Okay, I mean, that is something required by the EEOC. That's something that some states require, and it is a great way to prevent problems. Uh, and I hope you understand that 75% of all Americans say they hate their job or are miserable at work because they're getting bullied. I think you should do something about that. And God help you if something happens and you haven't tried to prevent it. Why don't you also tell them that if you work in a bullying environment and if you are the bully or if you are being bullied, we need everybody's help to keep the bullying and harassment out of here. And if you don't do it, you will go crazy. And I will tell you, the American Psychological Association is making it very clear. The number one threat to most people's level of stress is their job. Distress is their job. And it's the bullies at work. Okay. Oh, and by the way, cortisol causes Alzheimer's. Now, I'll tell you, I spent two weeks out in Denver, 18 sessions, and got people that sat through the session twice. Loved the session. They never thought about the bullies at work damaging their brain and giving them Alzheimer's. And then I had the group from hell. A, brew, a group of machinists that did nothing but absolutely attack me. I could not get through the session, and there was more brain damage in that room than you could possibly imagine. I, it, it was like they were carrying banners. I've got this. I've got that. Okay. I will tell you, coming home, okay, time to meditate, time to get back to all these things on this list. My point is, this never ends for you. This is something you're always going to be doing. Okay, so let's get off to the races here. And from last time, I want you all to make sure you're writing down at least three things. Three things is a good place to get started. Three things you're going to do in addition to what we talked about last time and this time. Okay, now let's look at diet. We looked at some of the things with diet before and how damaging uh, fast food is for us. Okay, now. What should you be eating? Let's look at the positive thing. You want high protein. And you get protein from vegetables. You can get it from meat. You can get it from all kinds of places. Low carb and low fat. And we are going to distinguish saturated from unsaturated fat. Your body is nothing but a transport system for your brain. I mean, look at Stephen Hawking. His body was shot. And I've got news for you. One day, your body is going to fall apart on you. Okay? It's just going to just go right to pot, just like it did for Betty White. It just was falling apart. She started to shrink into, you know, this little, little raisin. But her brain was as sharp as a tack. All right? So you, you kind of think about this. You got to keep your body in good condition. You got to give it good fuel. All right, so proteins, for four calories for every gram. So very efficient. Your body breaks down those proteins into amino acids, and that builds your body. Protein, spinach, broccoli, uh, lean whole meats. I love farm-raised. We're going to hit that a lot today. Organic, 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 organic. Farm raised, farm raised, farm raised. Oh, here's another good poll. How many people have a local butcher or someplace near you where they're farm raised meats? Pork, beef. Yeah, Jennifer's giving me a good hands up, getting lots of good hands up across. Yeah, not that I'm okay. Christy's not aware of. Okay, so you got to maybe have to Google that. Not at least 
an hour's drive. Okay. I raise my own. Oh, that is fantastic. Absolutely. Okay. I am noticing that Kroger and even, even Walmart, farmer's markets. I love farmer's markets. I just think they're the greatest thing. And I'm going to explain more of that to you as we go on. But, you know, think about what you're eating. The fish you're eating, the pork, never, 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 never eat farm-raised fish. They're frankenfish. If you've ever seen a pic picture of these fish coming out of that tank, oh, because they get lice on them. They cram all these fish in there so tight they get lice on them. So they, they pour the equivalent of hydrogen peroxide on them. Oh my God, it, it, they look those like those fish in the Simpsons where they got three eyeballs that live right next door to the nuclear plant. No, broccoli, green beans. And I'll tell you, you got to find out what you like, turkey, chicken. My family, I fix whole turkeys, uh, farm-raised, uh, uh, you know, farm-raised, uh, fresh, organic turkeys. I fix them all the time, all the time. And that's free food. You can eat as much as that as you want. Okay, now simple carbs versus complex carbs. This is one of those things where you're going to have to go to the grocery. And I'll tell you, everybody get a legal pad. I'll tell you, I don't know about you, but I reach over here. Man, I got my legal pads ready to go. I got them by the dozen. Go to the grocery. Plan on spending an hour or two. Where can you find the complex carbs? And this is really easy to understand. Uh, everything you eat has molecules. It's a molecule. So if you eat a simple carb like white bread, pure white bread with no fiber in it, it is a simple molecule. And so as it goes down into your system and then hits your liver, it breaks apart. Now it's a sugar. When these break apart, now it's pure sugar. There's no difference between really eating, taking a bite of a Snickers and eating white bread bread. Actually, Snickers might be better for you. It's got some whole peanuts in there. <laughs> so did you ever think, and actually think about it, I love this, pancakes. Oh, we're going to have pancakes. Well, most of them are simple sugars. And, you know, those carbs are, you know, it's just wonderful. You know, those and, well, what about waffles? Look, I got news for you. A waffle is nothing but a pancake with ridges in it. Okay. It's the same freaking thing. I'm mean, good Lord. Okay. And then we're going to pour Sugared syrup all over it. And we're going to give that to the kids. Uh, buckwheat pancakes are healthier, but I hate the taste. Yeah, Phoenix, absolutely. Because you're getting something that has real fiber in it, don't you? Yeah, I know. So what do you do? You pour more syrup on it. You know, you got to make it taste good. <laughs> okay. Now, actually, Phoenix got a great point for us. If you don't like it, don't do it. I, you do not sit down with a handful of barks and bark and twigs and eat it. No, you find things that you like, and there's always great things to like. You look for as many complex carbs as possible. Because let's say you got something with, you know, uh, like this many carbs, okay, that it's complex carb. They're complex. They're not simple carbs, but they're, they're, they're multifunctioning uh, faceted uh, molecules. So when the molecule goes down and hits your liver, see that nice slow burn? Nice, slow burn. So you want to be thinking of complex carbs. Well, it has complex carbs. Oh, my gosh. Uh, oats, brown rice, quinoa. I took years to say that correctly. Popcorn. Oh, man, I just love to see popcorn on that list. I used to work at a movie theater, and I got all the free popcorn I wanted all through high school and college. I'd actually go back to college with a big black plastic bag, a trash bag full of popcorn. Uh, everybody realizes that popcorn is really cheap. When you buy popcorn at the movie theaters, the expensive part is the cup. Yeah, and there was a uh, there was a there was a movie theater in Columbus that got shut down because they were re reusing the cups. Yeah, it was really disgusting. Anyway, fruits. Oh my gosh, look at all the different types of fruits. Melons in particular, and I can tell you right now, you can go pig out on berries all you want, all you want. Raspberries, blueberries, just. Oh my gosh, just fantastic. Oops, there we go. A little crazy with the mouse here. Okay, now carbs, go to the glycemicindex.com. All kinds of good information for you. You see, you need to be an educated consumer when you go to the grocery store. Otherwise, you grab the chips. And if you are gonna grab chips, grab some chips 
that actually have some carbs in them. Okay, fats. Now, fat gets a bad, bad rap. Bad rap. Okay, and one reason is because you see how many calories there are in fat compared to protein and uh, um, uh, carbs. Now, fat. You want unsaturated fat, not saturated fat. Saturated is, is real easy to remember. Saturated fat are saturated with fat. Saturated fats are saturated with fat. They give you many health problems. They damage your brain. They're bad for you. So when you're looking at butter, when you're looking at all kinds of other things, unsaturated fats, because 60% of the weight of your brain is fat. That's the myelin sheath that protects it. We got a great comment here from Joe. You know, it costs way more to eat well. The stores steer people to bad processed foods. You know, Joe, that is such a, an insightful, fantastic comment. Uh, just to put a real good spin on it here, in the 1970s, the, the government started subsidizing the farmers uh, for corn. Uh, I mean, we subsidize the farmers hundreds of millions. And, and when I say farmers today, what I mean are really multinational food corporations. You really don't have nearly as many farmers left as what you used to have. These are pretty much multinational food corporations. It, they actually lose money on what it costs to make corn, but the government pays the subsidy. And so it's a cash crop now. Okay, it's in everything. High fructose corn syrup is in everything. It's even in your Motrin. I'm not saying it's bad to take Motrin, but what I'm saying is it's everywhere. And so, yeah, you can buy 200 calories of food in the vegetable and fruit aisle for what 2,000 calories you can get in the potato, potato chip aisle. So you're, you're so right. So we got to be smart consumers. OK, but you want that unsaturated fat because that protects your myelin sheath. All right. And if you catch some condition that destroys your myelin sheath, we call that sometimes MS. Oh, got a great comment here yeah, in the chat. We got to get back to everyone having a garden, buying locally, knowing who you are buying your food from. Absolutely. Absolutely. And actually, there's a whole section in the book in which I just talk about organic and all this stuff. And what's happening to our food supply is absolutely uh, criminal. It is killing us, which is why you have so much diabetes today and overweight children. Okay, now fiber, soluble versus insoluble. Okay, soluble fiber dissolves in water, forms a nice gel-like material. It, it forms goop, nice goop. That's Metamucil. That some people take. Okay, fine. Can help lower blood cholesterol, glucose levels, which is great for you. Peas, beans, apples, 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 apples. Has anybody gone to buy apples lately? Let me raise my thumb there. Apples. Okay, I'm liking the ambrosias. Does anybody notice there must be 50 different types of apples? <laughs> I mean, really, come on. Okay. Hey, you want an apple? Well, what exactly is that? Now I'm getting some good thumbs up here. Find what you like. And I, sometimes these, these new things that I'll find, they're new to me. Honey crisp for me. I got a son that just loves those. Some of them, uh, part, uh, members of my family love galas. Uh, carrots, barley. Okay. There is, see how you're making your choices. And this is good for your brain. Okay. Insoluble fiber promotes the movement of material. Okay, that's what we think of with sticks and bark. Okay, it's roughage. Okay, so where do you get some roughage? Where do I go get some roughage at? Uh, oh, another Honeycrisp fan here. Okay, we should do a whole session on your favorite apples. Okay, that's just fantastic. Um, whole wheat flour. Now, that's what Phoenix is talking about with some of these pancakes that taste like bleh. Okay, so, um, so you got to find something you like. Wheat bran, nuts, beans, vegetables, cauliflower, green beans, potatoes, sweet potatoes in particular. There's more fiber, okay? There are more complex carbs in sweet potatoes. There is something out for you. Don't ever let anyone tell you that you have to suffer by eating a good uh, diet. Oh, Jessica, berries. Oh, almond flour. You know, Brenda, I don't know much about almond flour, but that's one reason I love doing these sessions. 
uh, Bonnie's using buckwheat flour for most of everything. You know, I don't know much about almond flour. I just don't know. But one hint I'll give you. And one thing I'll tell you about, and I put this in the book that here's what I find. And I've, I have licked a lot of toads. I have thrown a lot of quote, quote, milk out. Now, let's be honest here. It's like, okay, there's soy milk. There's almond milk. There's no, no, there's milk. Okay. Then everything else is a juice. Okay. Because Almonds don't have nipples. Okay, now anybody, anybody ever finds an almond, got a pair of nipples on them or one nipple, you let me know. Uh, but no, no, uh, the, the food manu- this is what the food manufacturers do to you. They make it sound like, oh, this sounds really good. Uh, soy milk or this milk. It's not milk, it's juice. And But that's fine. But America is not going to say, well, I'm going to put some almond juice on my cereal. No, that just sounds, you know, whatever. But that's what it is. And I'll tell you, I I have gotten gl- cups of, or glasses of, you know, empty glasses out, put five or six of them across. I'll have almond milk and this type of milk and everything, and I'll try it. And some of it, I just throw it right away because it just makes you want to gag. Okay. But you find some stuff. And I will tell you right now, how many people have a Kroger near you? Anybody got a Kroger near you? I will tell you point blank. I think they've got the best milk. Uh, they're low carb. They have got a low carb. Oh, look at all the yeses here. We're getting fantastic. Uh, the low carb products that Kroger brand is churning out, I think are the best on the market. Best on the market, low carb, uh, on the bread and high fiber. It's actually some of the highest fiber I've had. Yeah, Carb Master. Thank you, Shannon. Publix. Oh, somebody told us Publix. They've got the same thing going on. That's great. You know, you see, the only way you find that stuff is to be an investigator going around and looking at stuff. You turn to the side of the box or container and you read it. Yeah, I'm getting a lot of positive stuff here. I agree. A lot of people, you're out there looking already. Okay. Now, a couple hours. This guy should not be shopping there. I mean, he's in the wrong aisle right there. That is a bad aisle right there. Uh, All of that stuff. All of that stuff is a treat. That's a treat. Like if you want to watch the Ohio State Buckeyes get their butts kicked, then you can, honestly, that's an excuse for alcohol as much as you want and all the Lay's potato chips you want. Okay, because that is just a horrifying thing. Actually being sarcastic there. But this guy's in the wrong aisle, but he's got the idea. You go and you look on the outside perimeter. Go look at the meats. Look at everything and take your legal pad. I have, oh, and they make post-its that are like the size of of eight and a half by 11 paper, a little bigger. Those are great. I buy those like crazy because I am not going to go to the grocery store and not know what I'm doing because it's your brain. And you hear all this stuff. Well, this is going to, oh, groceries put it in the center of the aisle to entice people to buy the chips. Oh, you are so right. Learn to read the food labels. You are so right. You, you got to make sure that you're reading those labels. You know, I want high fiber. I want low carb, low calorie. Okay. I don't want them to put sugar in my bread. That's ridiculous. There's no reason for that. Okay. But food manufacturers are killing us. Now, just some general thoughts, butter and margarine go with the low carb, low fat, but you want unsaturated fat. And so that's going to be good for your brain. Remember, if you take care of your body, your body is nothing but a transport system for your brain. Okay, so and Truvia and Stevia. Personally, I like the Truvia, Stevia every so often, things like this. It's a thousand times sweeter than sugar, but zero carbs. And as of right now, we don't know of any side effects. Okay. It's like with saccharin. They knew there were side effects and they put it out there anyway. Um, Oh, here's a good, how healthy is olive oil? Olive oil is very good. Uh, uh, My family, we use, was it um, almond oil or something? Because it's got a lower flash point, but um, olive oil, um, Make sure you're getting, you know, pure virgin olive oil that is high in um, unsaturated fat. Um, Bonnie's using a daily food tracker that measures everything you've been talking about. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. 
Uh, Christy, hi, Christy. She's using Truvia in her, uh, um, what, tea every day. Okay, so yeah, um, dairy companies, I got another comment here, are mad that plant-based non-dairy companies are using the name milk. Yeah, that's right, they are. And they've kind of got a point because it is not milk, it is juice, but that's okay. Um, Oh, here we go. Joe saying the amount of sugar you need to use in cooking is not enough carbs to be a problem. Yeah, you're right. Um, you're, you're absolutely right. So it's using things smartly and it's always going to be research for you. Yeah. Coconut oil. Very good. So you kind of see you've already been on top of this. And a lot of folks say, well, yeah, I'm doing this because I have a heart condition or I got high blood pressure. OK, that is all fantastic. That's fantastic. Yeah. And Anne's telling us there's non-dairy liquid. Oh, yes, there so many things are coming. And I will tell you, it is easier, in my opinion, it is easier to eat healthy today than it's ever been in the last 50 years because our food supply changed uh, on us 50 years ago. And we'll talk about that. Now, snacks, man, oh, man, I love to have my almonds, my walnuts, pistachios are my particular favorite because now they shell them for you. I don't know who they get to do that. Probably, you know, Willy Wonka's you know, guys, the Oompa Loompas or whoever. So they're they're shelling all the pistachios now and everything. Blueberries, raspberries, blackberries. Strawberries have a little bit of an inflammation character to them. But boy, oh boy, blueberries, raspberries, and blackberries, you pour them, uh, put them in a bowl, pour some Truvia over top of them, and then some almond juice. Oh my gosh, that is fantastic. And it's good for you. Okay, it's good for you. Oh, I, I mean... How many addicts have we got out there for ice cream? Just love. Oh, me too. Oh, you could put ice cream on a shoe and I would eat it. Uh, it is so good. Just love it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And sometimes, yeah, I'll go get the real stuff. There's nothing beating, you know, uh, Jenny's or haagen or some of these places. They're just fantastic. But as a regular type of thing, man, I love the Briar stuff. Uh, they taste really good. And as you start looking around, there are a lot of low carb, low graters. Oh, absolutely. Graters, uh, that's fantastic. But that's not what I eat every day. Okay, this is stuff that I sugar free popsicles. I'll tell you, there are folks in the food industry that are taking good care of you. But you see, they're like they're they're like that needle in a haystack that you gotta walk around. And if you're an ice cream fan, let me tell you right now, you gotta spend half hour, 45 minutes, maybe an hour in just the ice cream aisle because you got to find what's working. Okay, now, just a couple other things here. Quest bars, I have better luck finding them going online. I used to go to GNC and sometimes they'd have what I like, sometimes not. They're high protein and low carb uh, and I carry them in my briefcase all the time. I've got them in my suitcase ready to go. And Atkins products. I live on, oh, uh, giving a good tip here from Shannon. Target has a lot of Quest products. Thank you. Yeah, because GNC always seems to be running out for me. Uh, Phoenix is saying her grandmother had those plastic popsicle molds that would pour real fruit juice into them and freeze them. Yeah, yeah. I used to do that as a kid too, because we couldn't you know, necessarily go to the grocery and get a bunch of stuff. So I'd fill up. It actually got to be a problem because we didn't have any ice cube trays because I was making like popsicles and all the <laughs> ice cube trays. So no, there's there those Atkins things. And I will tell you, Atkins is really getting the pressure on them. They're getting the pressure on them. There's a lot of folks that are discovering America is sick of diabetes. Okay, they're sick. You know, the, like one out of every three kids born in the year 2000 is expected to develop diabetes because of what we feed them. And and I'll tell you that one thing that we're not going to talk about today, but I mean, there was a great study that came out in 2018 that distress. We've all, And when I say distress, you've been through enough of these courses that you know uh, that I'm talking massive amounts of cortisol and adrenaline. Okay, massive amounts of cortisol and adrenaline. Okay, um, will aggravate your MS, your diabetes, your rheumatoid arthritis, or any type of arthritis because it inflames the body. The reason it inflames the body is because the body is attacking your your innate immune system is inflammation, and it will make your body inflame because it's fighting all the cortisol and adrenaline. We've always known that. Now we've discovered that this excess adrenaline and cortisol 
can cause these conditions. It can give you arthritis, diabetes, and so on. So, oh yeah, yeah. So keeping a good, healthy system. You kind of see, we always talk about stress. How, oh, how do I handle my stress? You've got to get your body in shape to battle the stress. If you're gonna, if you're gonna run a marathon, okay, or even now, now I'm never gonna run a marathon. That's never gonna happen. So let's say we're gonna run a 5K. Okay, so we're gonna run a 5K. All right, you don't just go out and run the 5K the next day. Not unless you're masochistic. No, you train for it. You get ready. This is what we're talking about. We're getting your body ready for the distress. And you always carry these snacks that are healthy, ready to go in your briefcase all the time. And let me tell you, now hang on to your butt. Oh, please remember there are different types of diabetes. So they're not all the same. Yes, Kim, you're absolutely right. Some, some There's type one, there's type two. And now we're discovering other types of things. Uh, no, you're absolutely right. I'm talking about type two, very, very common type of thing, uh, run of the mill type two that a lot of people develop and, and, and understand a lot of us, like in my family, it runs in my family. Uh, well, if I had lived the way that I live now, if I've always lived that way, I wouldn't, I don't believe I would have diabetes because in order, like you might have like Chris Hemsworth just discovered that he carries the gene for Alzheimer's. That does not mean he's going to get Alzheimer's. Under the Human Genome Project that came out in the 1990s, you know, we've discovered that you've got, you know, an inclination or a predisposition towards these conditions. But if you don't live right, if you don't take care of yourself, and you live like most Americans do, the methyl molecule will unlock that DNA, that 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 uh, source. And you'll get that condition. But if you live right, then the methyl molecules maybe won't open that up. So no, no, you're, you're absolutely right. There's different types, but a lot of people get diabetes from our food supply, stress, and a lot of the other things that we do to abuse our bodies. And I'm not saying they're asking for it. I'm saying that this is what the food manufacturers and everything are doing to us. You know, little kids that are getting diabetes by the age of 10 uh, and they're not born with it, that's criminal. Uh, and that's giving us a good tip here. RX bars are egg whites, nuts, and dates. Very good, Annette. Thank you. It's always good stuff. Linda gives us the most common sense thing here, sums up meal planning. Meal planning. Okay. Now, you want to be looking for organic. Okay. Our food supply has changed more in the last 50 years than it has in the previous 5,000 OK, um, I'll tell you, uh, there's a lot of stuff going on with pesticides and fertilizers. OK, and let me just clue you in here, too. Uh, Monsanto and a lot of the other seed producers, they've done an absolutely fantastic job of getting more food per bushel. OK, like, you know, used to get, you know, old time farmers used to get 10 to 20 bushels of corn. Uh, per acre. Now they're getting over 200. Well, that sounds really good, but there's only so many minerals and vitamins that are in the soil. And see, what they're doing is they're making the stalks thicker, okay? And so when they make the stalks thicker, there's more yield so the plants don't fall over. And that's true of broccoli and a bunch of other things, but they're not pulling more nutrients. Let me give you a summation here for this. If you ate one orange, from 1970, you would have to eat for the vitamin A. You would have to eat eight oranges today to get the same vitamin A. Oh yeah, Linda's given us a great comment here. I have at least five generations of Alzheimer's in my family. I haven't gotten tested. Uh, can somebody turn off their mic there? Unless you got something to say, you got a comment, that's wonderful. Um, says, I haven't gotten tested. Instead, I've chosen to eat healthy foods with whole foods, exercise. Linda, you're absolutely right, okay? And I'll tell you, with this condition my brain was in, there's nobody in this room or that I meet that has more seeds of Alzheimer's in their brain than I do. Remember, cortisol causes Alzheimer's. A lot of things can cause Alzheimer's, but cortisol causes Alzheimer's. That's what you get from distress. Well, I, I live this type of life uh, religiously. I am so adamant that I'm not going to get Alzheimer's 
that I actually bought a hyperbaric oxygen chamber for my basement. Um, uh, so, um, so, you know, you want to make sure that you are taking care of your brain. And we're getting a comment here that At Atkins bars state that they contained bioengineered food ingredient. Actually, I find a lot of bars are labeled this way, so I stay away from those bars. Yeah, uh, and I don't argue with that. I think you need to choose, you know, first of all, you eat everything in moderation. And particularly if you're looking for something to eat on the go, you want something that you're going to like and something that is not going to give you the carbs and everything else. So yeah, I'm not arguing with what you're saying at all. You know, but so that just means you got to look further if you want to, you know, find something like the RX bars. I think that's a very natural choice. Okay. You want to eat farm raised meats. Okay. Why? Because you don't want to eat anything from a confined animal feeding operation, which is where the vast, vast, vast majority of our food comes from. Okay. Now, grass fed cattle. And my grandma and grandpa, my mother's side, had a farm. I know all about farms, uh, spent a lot of time on the farm, about 18 months to fatten up a cow. Okay, and then you take them and butcher them and stuff like this. You know, you pet them on the head before you, you know, butcher them. But, you know, they, you treat them pretty good for that 18 months, all right? That is a CAFO. CAFOs are cattle. They're forced to eat corn. Now, let me clue you in here. Cows cannot digest corn. Actually, humans don't do a very good job digesting corn. And anybody who's at, you ever eaten corn on the cob, you've discovered on your own a day or so later. Okay. So they can't, so it makes them sick. It makes them sick. So they inject them with antibiotics because they're getting sick. Plus they're all crowded in like that, standing in each other's manure. Okay. Now, so they're also going to make them grow faster. They want them to maximize. So they inject them with growth hormones too. So they're, they're fattening them up with corn, which they have a hard time digesting, makes them sick. You can fatten up a CAFO cow in six months. You do not want to eat that. You, so yeah, your local farmers, your, your, you know, uh, we just had, I'm really upset here in Reynoldsburg. We had a local butcher who served, you know, who sold all this really great stuff and one day they just closed up business. So, you know, hopefully we'll get another one around here soon. So you, you want farm raised organic. Okay. So this is just what I just said. So antibiotics in the food and all this other stuff. And you, you eat it. This is exactly what they do with chickens. Okay, in 1950, it took 70 days to raise a chicken. Today, it takes us 48 days. And they're twice as big. The breasts are so big that they can't even take three steps without falling down. Actually, in these chicken CAFOs, uh, it is someone's job every morning to go through. Now, look at them all packed in there. They don't look happy. They look like they're getting sick. Okay, It's someone's job every morning to go and pick up the dead ones because they died. And you want to eat that? Okay, there's a reason that, and I will tell you right now, why is all this? It is all because of the fast food market. McDonald's controls the beef in this country, whether you eat at McDonald's or not. Why? Because they are the biggest purchaser. Uh, the, the suppliers will do whatever McDonald's wants. Do you ever wonder why you can buy a quarter pounder for a dollar? You ever wonder about that? Okay. Actually, the chicken McNuggets, McDonald or, uh, McDonald's had to stop calling them chicken McNuggets until they put some chicken in them. Oh, yeah. I, you have to be aware of what you're eating. Just because it tastes good doesn't mean it is good for you. Okay. And we eat all that stuff. Oh, thank you, Darren. Yes, yeah, Super Size Me 1 and 2 are good documentary movies for learning this. You know, Darren, I am so naive. I would have thought that Americans would have watched Super Size Me and they'd have been so turned off at McDonald's. But oh, no, I was driving home last night from a Haraco event, my local HR group, wonderful group, came driving home. Oh, my gosh, McDonald's was wrapped around the corner, all the way around the corner at eight o'clock at night. No, no, no. See, see what I'm saying? Organic, because all that's going to go to your brain. 20% of everything you eat goes to your brain. 
You don't want those pesticides and everything else in there and antibiotics. Everybody with me? Okay. Uh, my husband is a sudden cardiac arrest survivor. Oh my, he's fully functional. He was a vegan for a year, but it was very difficult. This information is so valuable. Well, wonderful. After seeing and hearing all this, we're going to be making many changes in our household. Judy, you have no idea how good that makes me feel. And I, I, I really think we need to start looking at ourselves. And, you know, America starts one person at a time. So here's something else to think about, Judy. I love the vegan style. I, you know, I like meat, I like, but I like my vegetables too. I like my big salads. Even if you eat right, you can't get all the vitamins and minerals that you need. Even, it, it isn't possible. So vitamin and mineral packets. And I always get attacked by doctors over this. So I always like to show them this. Here's an MMA fighter. Okay, and you kind of see, this is him laying down in a spec machine, and this is a blood flow scan. You're looking up through the bottom of his chin, and you see the top of his forehead at the top there. Okay, you see those two holes on the left? That means he's not getting enough brain, blood flow to his frontal lobes. Okay, so what did he do? He took uh, a group of brain-directed supplements, multivitamin packets, and I'll show you what I take here in a minute. Uh, and look at the one his brain scan on the right. That's after just a couple hours. It gets the blood flow to your brain, to your brain. Now, do not go buy that Centrum crap. At least I wouldn't buy it, okay? Because you got all these different vitamins and minerals. First of all, you got to make sure that what you're buying, um, and, and Scientific American has import, uh, embraced this, very reputable journal. The American Medical Association and the Journal of American Medical Association adopted and said, you need to be taking multivitamins. And they did this like 15, 20 years ago. I was doing a group of doctors who attacked me over this stuff. No, it's just expensive urine. And I will tell you, it just amazes me. Even if you eat a diet that is very healthy, you're not getting what we call micronutrients. What are that, what's that? Vitamins and minerals. Vitamins go into your body and help your body work better, like vitamin C, okay? Um, a mineral, like calcium, goes in your body and becomes part of your body. Okay, so Scientific American, JAMA, AMA, both say you need to be doing this. It was amazing to me because the doctors that I was talking to attacked me over this, said it was nothing but expensive urine, and so I asked them, I said, well, which vitamins and minerals, which ones? And they said, well, all of them. And I said, no, only vitamins B and C are water soluble. So if you overdose on vitamins B and C, it's no big deal. You'll just urinate it out. But if you take too much vitamin A or vitamin K, it will store in your body and the fat cells and turn toxic. It'll poison you. I had a client once his skin was actually turning yellow because he was taking too much. No, that's why you like that packet and each vitamin and mineral is absorbed differently. Okay, so you want something that follows GMP. Okay, there's a reason that fish oil or whatever costs what it costs at GNC or Shackley and you can get a thousand of them for $10 at Walmart. Okay, don't buy that crap. Okay, I want something that is GMP, good manufacturing practices, and something that's run through United States Pharmacopeia. Now, here's how drugs work in this country. You are Lilly or some of these big manufacturers. So you develop a, pro, a, a product, a, a, a drug. You then send it through testing and everything. And it has to go through Uni United States Pharmacopeia, USP. Then it goes to the FDA for approval. Okay, over-the-counter vitamins and minerals, they don't have to do anything, but the really good ones are GMP approved, good manufacturing, clean practices, and they send them through United States Pharmacopeia. They just don't have to go to the, to the uh, FDA, which FDA by several accounts has been declared the most corrupt government uh, agency in existence. And that's a fast race too. I will tell you, there's a tremendous amount of corruption out there, but um, oh yeah, it's just amazing. So where's a good place to go? Shackley, Advocare, 
GNC. I'm told that the vitamin shop has good ones because in those packets, it's going to have actually the vitamins and minerals that you need that will be absorbed. I use this because my brain was a disaster, was just a disaster. So I go actually to the Amen Clinics products and I buy, buy Brain MD and I take two of these packets every day. Because this is what they give the NFL football players who've had their brains literally bashed in. Well, mine was in bad shape, so that's what I do. I'll tell you right now, this is a really key. And as you figured out, having a healthy brain and body is not just one thing. It's, it's, it's a series of things. So that's what I do. There's other ones out there that people take that are really good, but this is really powerful, potent stuff. And that's what, that's what my whole family takes. Fish oil. Fish oil is a big deal. Now, fish oil actually breaks down into two different segments. There's DHA. Okay, that's that's for the fat, the myelin sheath. Okay, uh, DHA accounts for up to ninety-seven percent of the omega threes, which is official uh, uh, fish oil, um, and that is what helps your eyes work, your retina. Okay, so DHA, you got to get that. It really unsaturated fat into your body. And, and DHA is a great way to do that. Okay, so where do you get that? Well, you take your fish supplements, but fish, plant, nuts and oils, cold water fish, wild caught. Never, 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 uh, ever take uh, or buy farm-raised fish. Uh, Joy's asking, I hate taking pills. I take the gummy ones. Is is there a gummy one? I don't know, Joy. That That's a really good question. And I know a lot of folks are like that. Um, and so if, if you do some research, go out and Google it and see, see what's out there. Um, there might be, and there might even be some on Dr. Amon's site. So I've just never looked into it, but maybe so. Getting new stuff all the time, aren't we? EPA. Now, EPA, fish oil, and that's all in the same pill uh, or in the same thing you eat, that is good blood flow. Blood flow, blood flow, blood flow. you got to have blood flow to your brain, okay? And fish oil is imperative. And I will tell you point blank, I take my vitamins every day, and every so often, I will pop a few extra fish oils. Why? Because I'm paranoid. I've seen how damaged my brain was. <laughs> I've seen it and go, Ooh, that was really bad. I don't want to go back to that. Oh, Alicia's telling us the vitamins and minerals in gummies are stripped of their nutrition, nutrition. Oh, okay. Uh, Alicia, I don't know. Joy, you two maybe connect a little bit there. Uh, you put your email in here or something, connect. And no, that's a good point. And because a lot of those children's, uh, vitamins and minerals are gummies, aren't they? And I've never investigated the gummies, so I don't want to express an opinion. I like to talk about something I haven't researched myself, but that's a good tip there, Alicia. Good tip. Maybe, hey, Alicia, Joy, you get together. Maybe you can develop one. Uh, the problems, oh, Jackie's telling us the problem I have with most gummies is they have a lot of artificial sweeteners and colors. Yeah, that kind of figures. You have to read the labels carefully to find the ones that don't. Um, Jackie, have you found a good one? Um, oh, uh, turmeric. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. Turmeric is a spice that you can put on your salads. It helps reduce inflammation. It's great. Cinnamon is good too. Um, uh, oh, um, gummies also lack iron. Okay. So I'll tell you, um, uh, oh, Jackie's telling us, no, she gave up after she's researched this and she just buys the pills. Pills don't bother me. Okay. Um, you know, find some way to make it work. You know, I mean, find some fun way to eat the pills or something, but I've never looked into the gummies, but that's a great question. Great, great, great. I mean, I'm not saying they're not out there. Jackie's telling us she's not saying they're not out there. I'm not saying that either, but I'll tell you, that's a good research project. Okay. Let's get to something else here. Water. Water, 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 and more water. Okay. And if you were here in my office, you would see I've got tons of drinking glasses. And, and I mean, these are big drinking. I mean, 32 ounces. Okay. And I will drain these throughout the day. Okay. Actually, these are both kind of half empty. Um, you got to make sure 
that you're drinking your water. Your water or water is what makes up your body and it makes up your brain. And I was listening to the radio and this guy was a, a DJ. And he's talking about he just hates to drink water and he'll get dizzy. Well, yeah, you're, you're not hydrating your brain. Your brain is shutting down which is probably a really bad idea if you're going to go out and drive on 270. This is ridiculous. Water, water, water. Now, you're going to pee a lot. You're going to pee a lot. So make your plans, particularly until you start to adjust. But you see what you're doing is you're hydrating your brain and then you're also flushing out. Now, remember, what is stress management? It's getting the excess cortisol and adrenaline out of your body and getting the eustress chemicals in. When you drink water, you're flushing that stuff out. Every time you pee, you should be thinking, this is great. This is great. There goes my stress. <laughs> there goes my stress. Now, I'm just looking over here, too. Um, Phoenix has her background there. They take a look over here. I just love that with the pool. Uh, that is how you make a federal job fun. Okay. Um, but if you are going to be drinking this amount of water, don't drink that water and don't pee in that water. Okay. So that is not a tip. You, you, and I, I just give you fair notice. This is, this is what you got to do. Absolutely. This is a big part of brain health. Big part. Now, anybody here hate water? My wife hates water, just hates it, hates it. I'm seeing all the hands go up. Yeah, lots of folks. Okay, this is a tip. I add electrolyte drink mix to my water. Ultimate replenisher, tastes great, plant-based. Thank you, thank you. Everybody take notice of that. Ult Ultima replenisher. Okay, Ultima replenisher. I will check that out. Thank you. You see how getting together, we always get... Um, new ideas, all right? Um, so there's all kinds of good things out there. I like the sweet drops. I like the sweet drops. And I literally have a dozen, maybe 20 of these bottles up there with all different kinds of flavors. Great chocolate, uh, vanilla, Amazon, 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 Amazon. Okay, they will have it to my door tomorrow. Amazon and Whole Foods carry Ultima. Amazon, thank you, uh, Ultima. Okay, so that's something to look into. And you know what I'm going to do with that information? I'm going to order a couple of them, put them in water, and lick it. Let's see what this tastes like. Okay, let's see what that's like. So thanks for the tips, but I will tell you, I have no trouble drinking my water. No trouble. Oh, and this is all made with stevia, so no known side effects at all. It is rare that you can find something that you really love and it's free food, free food, no carbs, no calories. I, I tell you, I want to be buried with some of this stuff. Okay. Cause um, you know, just great. They, they might not have it in heaven. You know, they might not, they, you know, who knows what they got up there. Okay. And that's where I hope to go. All right. Exercise. You knew this was coming. Nobody wants to talk about this. One. Okay. Exercise, but exercise comes in all kinds of forms. It's a miracle drug. And when you think of it that way, that, that, that helps you. What do I mean by miracle drug? Okay. Now, first of all, and I've talked about this a thousand times over, and I want this to be stapled on your liver. You never get rid of stress. Anyone who ever says, uh, oh, I just, you know, here's how you get rid of your stress. Leave. You get rid of your stress one way. You die. That's how you get rid of your stress. There's no stress. So you're either going to have you stress or you're going to have distress. Okay. Well, exercise, doing something that you like and revving your body up is stress. And that's you stress. And we've talked about that. That's dopamine, that's serotonin, oxytocin, maybe telomerase, but it is also BDNF. Everything we're talking about is going to fail unless you do this. Okay, what's BDNF? Brain-derived neurotropic factor. That's why we call it BDNF, because that's a mouthful. Okay, what is it? It is miracle grow for your brain. When you take your dog for a walk, when you go out and shoot hoops, when you go out and do things that you like to do to exercise, 
you are releasing BDNF in your brain and those 100,000 new neurons that you're growing, brand new one, neurogenesis, you're going to grow those 100,000 neurons. And then those 100,000 neurons are going to grow sprouts, which we call neurosynapsis. Going to grow all these connections, 10 to 100. That's a million potential connections in one month to rewire your brain. If you don't exercise in some way, you don't get the BDNF and all 100,000 of those are going to die. You did not rewire your brain. Okay. And you also release tryptophan, the precursor for serotonin that gets into your brain. Okay. Actually, you eat different, you know, like turkey and stuff like this as tryptophan that turns into serotonin, but it doesn't get in your brain. When you exercise, that's the only time that serotonin gets in your brain and serotonin defeats depression. And here's why. That is Vernon Golston in Happier Days with The Ohio State University. Um, massive guy. He's a big amino acid. That's a big amino acid. Okay. See the munchkins from Oz? Uh, little itty bitty serotonin. Little itty bitty serotonin is a tiny little uh, amino acid. So most of the time, the big amino acids just push the little munchkins out of the way. They can't get in there. All right. They can't get through the blood brain barrier. So think of that like a bar door. All right. So when you exercise, well, the big amino acids go to the muscles. They go to inside the game. So the little amino acids just waltz on through. That is how you cure depression. That is how you repair depression, depending on how far you go. Okay. And our weight. I'm real calorie conscious. I'm real. Yeah, exercise should be fun, Joy. Absolutely. Dance classes. Oh, yeah. I. Anybody ever watch Friends and you watch Phoebe Buffet go jogging? And she runs like she's deranged. Okay. Hey, try that for a while. You fit right in in New York. Okay. But gaining weight, this is something we all need to think about. Uh, yeah, that's one of the best episodes, isn't it? Isn't it, Brooke? Okay. Uh, but you're taking nutrients away from your brain. So find something you do that you like and do it. And the more muscle you put on, the better your respiratory and circulatory systems can work. What's that mean? You're going to get more oxygen and blood to your brain. All of this is for your brain. So 150 minutes a week of moderate aerobic exercise. What's that? Walking. Walking. What's 75 minutes of vigorous aerobic exercise? It's walking with your dog and your dog gets away and you have to chase it. That is the difference. Okay. But you got to find something that you like to do or you will not do it. Now, just little tips here. Okay. Full body workout that just is great for distress. Get yourself a boxing bob. That's boxing bob. And he's wearing the enemy gear. Um, never buy new exercise equipment. Never do that because a lot of exercise equipment ends up being um, basically holding laundry for people. Go to sec secondhand sports or play it against sports. You'll get everything you want a third as expensive as what you'd buy new. Never buy anything new. You don't have to buy anything new. Okay. Go blue. Yeah, I know. You really got us this year. We just... Oh, it was ugly. Oh, boy, that was ugly. Okay. Now, I am a towering five foot six and shrinking. I have, I, so I put in a basketball court in my backyard. I've got about an acre behind my house and everything. And so you just go out there and you shoot some hoops. Play with the dogs. Okay. Strength training at least twice a week. Okay. Everybody with me? What is strength training? Rubber bands. Amazon. Okay, now, everybody should like this. Okay, I got this right from Dr. Amon. Sex. Having sex can lower your risk of heart attack and stroke by 50%. Now, if you have a spouse who is not interested in sex, go to your doctor and get a prescription. And, and hand this to them, okay? It'll help with pain relief, improve depression, boost serotonin. Why? Because you're releasing massive amounts of eustress chemicals. Dr. Daniel Amon says if sex was a drug, it would need FDA approval. And there's no medication on the planet that can do as much good for you as good old sex. And he says you should do it three times a week. Okay, now, this does not mean that you go out and pick up some trollop 
or tart on the street. That is not what I'm saying. Do not get me wrong here. But meaningful relationships, this is excellent for you. Okay. And sleep. Sleep is a big deal, my friends. Okay. We humans all sleep in 90-minute cycles, one and a half hours. So in 1900, Americans got an average of nine sleeps or nine hours of sleep a night. That was great. Today, we're getting about six. So you see how those cycles are reduced. Less than six hours of sleep, you get reduced blood flow to the brain. And blood flows everything. At the end of a sleep cycle, that 90 minutes, you go into REM sleep. That's when you dream. That is also when the little brushers come out and clean out the excess cortisol and adrenaline. So it's that last little bit to rest your brain. When you sleep nine hours or eight hours a night. That's not because your body needs it. It's because your brain needs it. Your body doesn't need that much sleep. So yes, when you sleep, your brain is cleaning out the toxins. And if you don't get those toxins cleaned out, you're going to be grouchy. You're going to start the day with poison in your brain. Therefore, sleep rejuvenates the brain. If you don't get enough sleep, it's torture. It is actually, you become psychotic. And just as a side note, when you sleep at night, you refill the uh, neurotransmitters in your brain. That's what makes your brain fire. So if you don't get enough sleep, you don't have enough neurotransmitters. You don't have enough gas. Your frontal lobes don't have enough gas to get you through the day. Freeze right there, folks. This is why we're better for our diets in the morning than we are in the evenings. You're running out of neurotransmitters. So guess what? Your frontal lobes are shutting down. You don't have the willpower. Also, when you sleep at night, you transfer short-term memory into long-term memory. You remember stuff. So can't sleep? Find some more exercise that you like. Brainstorm. Meditate. Oh, Meditation's a big deal. L-tryptophan, take supplements for L-tryptophan, maybe even melatonin. If you still have trouble sleeping, see a sleep specialist. Sleep is a big freaking deal. It's a big deal. Meditation. Now just look how chill this guy is, okay? Meditation sounds like a nice, fuzzy, feel-good thing, but it actually rewires your frontal lobes. Buddhist monks, we've seen with step by studying them, their anxiety and anger areas go down. And the frontal lobe areas actually become sharper. Actually, they, they get bigger. Navy SEALs are doing this, okay? Meditating to control their fear of drowning. And as a result, they have better emotional control. 25% of Navy SEALs used to pass training, now 33%. Now, I don't know if you've ever studied Navy SEAL training, but if something's good enough for a Navy SEAL, poo is good enough for me. Okay, UCLA studied this. The hippocampus, which is your short-term memory transmitter, and your frontal lobes actually get larger. You increase your short-term memory. And you're all going to just, oh, yeah, by the way, meditating for 20 minutes a day for five days has been shown to reduce stress and cortisol levels, distress-related cortisol levels. Okay, and that's what we're talking about. I actually have the Calm app right here on my, uh, my phone, ready to go. And I like to go sit in my hyperbaric oxygen tank, breathe pure oxygen, and meditate. Uh, I have several clients that I coach that I have gotten them prescriptions for going getting hyperbaric oxygen tank treatments. And they go two or three times a week and pure, breathe pure oxygen, covered by insurance. And I thought we'd wrap up with massage. Great massage. Okay, massage is the greatest example of use stress chemicals. You know, has any, how many people here have ever gotten a massage? Let's do a vote here. Yeah, look at all the hands. Look at that. Oh, you ever notice that when you leave getting a massage, you feel so good. I'm just so relaxed. They've, yeah, I get the monthly. Great, April. That is at least what I like to do. Absolutely. Get them monthly. Yes. And so you relax. So you're pulling out into traffic and some jackass almost takes off your front end, hits you, misses you, but almost hits you. We go, eh, what the heck, he missed me. That's because you're high. You're high on eustress chemicals. That's what eustress chemicals do for you. Think what that's doing for your brain. Isn't, isn't all this common sense? And we tend to deprive ourselves. Now, 
What does your brain look like? I will tell you right now, one of the first things I got did when I got back from teaching those animals out in Denver, and understand I had 18 sessions that were fantastic. People wanted to send in it twice. They, they, they can't wait for the book to come out. And the last one, I couldn't even get a word in. I was attacked by crazy people. And I told, I told the, the HR manager, I said, man, you have got a lot of mental disorders in there. I said, I'll tell you, I would not coach any of these people unless they got a brain scan first. These people are way gone. And you know what her answer was? Well, yeah, but they're mostly isolated from each other most of the day, so it's not a problem. Okay, and that next that next week, you know what happened just down the road in Colorado Springs? Anybody know what happened? Somebody went in and started killing all the uh, uh, LGBTQ people. Oh, yeah, it is like the beginning of a sci-fi. You know, I, I would want to start looking for pods in the other room for these people. But I will tell you, it's the worst group. I've never been attacked doing this group. And the HR person said, well, they don't work together. Okay, I'll tell you right now, you've got a mass shooting waiting. This is exactly, if you look at the brain type or you look at the personality and the, the characteristics of the guy at Walmart in Virginia who showed up and just started killing his coworkers, he was paranoid, short-tempered, covered up the, the camera on his phone because he thought the government was watching him. If you've got any employees like that, we need to have them assessed. That is brain damage. And that is a problem, okay? And until they fix the brain, there's no fix in their behavior. So did everybody get at least three things you want to do? You kind of excited? It should be fun. It should be fun taking care of your brain. So yeah, let's get out there. And uh, the, the, the book is still, um, there we go. I'm going to post this again out there. It is launching right now. I want, uh, I want people to get it for a dollar. I mean, that's less than coffee. And I, I want people to improve their brains and I want people to pass this message on. This video will be posted next week and I want all your friends and family to watch it. The whole series of them. We got, you know, we got like four hours of video here for people to learn how to rewire their brain. And, and I want people to watch it for free because I tell you right now, we've got a major crisis going on. Uh, thank you, Alicia. I'm excited for you to read it. Let, and when you read the book and you, you go through it, let me know what you think. I love to hear what it's like. Can I get it at Barnes and Nobles? Not yet, Becky. Not yet. Uh, Amazon is so easy to, um, work with that. Um, um, you know, I, I don't really bother to go to Barnes and Noble. Okay. And, and one thing I'll tell you for the hard copies, uh, one thing I found, uh, you know, there's hard copies out there. There's hard copies. Actually, there's there's hard copies and hardbacks. So you can get it however you want it. Uh, but those are print on demand. The technology today is amazing that if you order a hard copy, they will print it up today and mail it out the next day. Isn't that amazing? That I, I, When I was told that, I'm like, you're kidding. Because I said, hey, are we going to put this on shelf someplace? And it was kind of funny. My publisher laughed and said, nobody does that anymore. <laughs> said, you know, that's, that's, you know, it is just amazing. And digital version, Stephanie, you're right. Uh, the digital version sells, even after the launch, dwarf hard copy. They dwarf it because you can read it on your phone. If somebody's under the age of 30 and they got good eyesight, they're probably going to read it on their phone. Well, I'm 62 and that ain't going to happen. Okay. But I would read it on my computer. And we're going to do the 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 audio book in January. That's my plan. And so, um, oh, yeah, I'm going to read it off of an iPad. Because you can't hear me turning pages. <laughs> Everything's new, isn't it? Everything's different. So, uh, yeah, it's just it's so exciting. And honestly, that's what I really, really, really enjoy. I love this 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 chat here that people can take this. And, and if, if we had like 100 and. 30 people in here for today and probably have another couple hundred watch the video. Um, you know, if you pass this on to 10 people, you know, look what the impact we have of people getting better lives. That's, that's the key, isn't it? That's what makes you feel good. Any other questions, comments, deep concerns on anything that we talked about? Here's to our health. Thank you, Tom. Here's to everybody's health. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, and that reminds me, Tom. Yeah. Any of you out there with your chapters, 
um, uh, any type of organization wants to hear this message, please let me know. I love to spread this message. If you want this message for your employees, for your harassment training, and, and so that they can start thinking about healing their brain, give me a call. Let me know. Uh, if not, send them to the send them to the, the website to watch the free videos. Hey, thank you to everybody out there. Um, questions, comments, you can always reach me later. But it is such a, a pleasure to have done these. And after the first of the year, we're going to jump, you know, start another series of videos, uh, podcasts. I love doing these free monthly things. It'll probably be a combination of harassment, bullying, brain health, because you can't get away from those topics anymore. And it's a national crisis. So, hey, everybody, take care. Uh, enjoy the holidays. Uh, get the book. Prep, send the email on to your book. If you did not get an email from me, on this, let me know, and I will shoot one out to you because sometimes it gets gets blocked. Uh, and if you have ideas for what you want for webinars, uh, for uh, free webinars in 2023, 20, let me know. Okay, uh, where's the handout? If oh, I'm gonna I'll send the handout it again. Maybe not everybody got it, but I'll send the handout back out to everybody to make sure that everybody has it. Okay, and I'll also send you the link. All right. Well, hey, thank you. It's so nice to see all these happy faces again. Uh, and I will be in touch later. Hey, take care.